Back to Afghanistan and Kabul airport, where in August tens of thousands were desperately trying to get out. It's absolutely surreal landing here at Kabul airport after so much drama and chaos here. Now the airport is almost calm, cleaned up, but with the new regime's flags on full display. Afghans are trying to find the heart in Kabul. I've been here multiple times reporting, but what was it like with the Taliban on the streets in power? I talked to producer Ellen Morrow about what we saw, starting in Kandahar, where Canadians fought the Taliban. Never before had I been in the Kandahar region when it wasn't actively at war. You weren't worried as much about an IED in the road. You weren't worried about getting caught up in crossfire. And you know, that's what the people told us, didn't they? That they were feeling more secure in the way that they had more mobility. But of course, everything in Afghanistan, Kandahar and the rest is so unpredictable right now because the Taliban are so new to this job of governing. <laughs> 48 hours after we left Kandahar, uh, there was a suicide attack at a mosque not far from where we were staying. And that really speaks to so much, doesn't it, about the security situation in the country. There were at least three major attacks uh, by ISIS-K claiming responsibility. Lots of people died in the short time we were there. So this speaks to the instability that is gripping the country right now. And it appears that ISIS-K is perhaps the military opposition to the Taliban right now. So people are worried about that. <laughs> Talib commanders are now politicians, <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> Saif Ryman Saif fought in the war, was arrested by the U.S. and spent three years in Bagram, the notorious U.S. prison near Kabul. We were in that sort of awkward situation, weren't we, where we had a, a Taliban minder and all of a sudden the Taliban was responsible for our security. So after assuring us that it was safe and secure in the district, he uh, dispatched a Taliban guard with an AK-47 over his shoulder to ride with us in our vehicle. And that was a real moment. And at one point, he turned to the translator and said to him uh, something to the effect of, are you afraid? And it was translated to me, and I, I said, no. Should I be? And he paused, and he said, well, so many people say such cruel and terrible things about the Taliban. It was surreal. And we met a family in Panjwe district that really speaks to just the impact of war. This woman's son, fighting for the Taliban, was killed by Afghan forces three months ago, just before the end. How can I be happy? I lost my beloved son. I'm left with all his children, my grandchildren. What should I do now? And, you know, that echoes through those 20 years of people who lost. When I asked the district uh, chief in Panjwe, the, the Taliban, uh, that, you know, I reminded him that 158 Canadians had lost their lives in Afghanistan. And he looked at me shrewdly and he said, you lost in the Afghan war, we lost also. We saw so much heartbreak. <coughs> Mothers with malnourished babies in the hospital who they simply can't take care of by themselves. This three-year-old made it through tuberculosis, but it weakened him. His mom, Nargis, can't find enough food for eight kids. Afghanistan now is near the top or at the top of the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. This massive scene of a thousand families lined up desperate with their ration cards. What stunned me was the people who've worked in this area, like the country director for the, the World Food Program, saying, I've been at this role for a long time in many countries. I've never seen a collapse like this. We heard desperation, too, from so many women and girls who just feel like their dreams and their futures are now being taken from them. The new Taliban government has banned secondary education until further notice for girls grade seven and up. And that could be Rana's fate. I got more sad when I heard the upper classes can't come to school. I don't know if this is our last year, if next year we can come or not. To hear that grade six girl in 
Malalai School in Kabul say, I don't know if I'm going to get, get to come to school next year, really brought it home. And talking to those two university students that we spoke to, their level of frustration, um, because not only are there opportunities in education looking extremely dismal right now, but even if you got your engineering degree as one woman wanted, young woman wanted, then what are the job prospects? Because from the Taliban, the messaging so far has been, there will be no equal jobs for men and women in this country. Brilliant student. Ah. Masuda, not her real name, is a first year engineering student. Um, this is for science. 18 years old with a portfolio of good grades and leadership diplomas, grand ambitions until two months ago. Uh, I'm so sad, I'm so upset, I feel disappointed, and uh, I have lots of uh, goals that I think uh, I won't reach them. She's just overcome with, with grief. It was very hard to listen to that. One situation that kept happening to us over and over and over again was people coming up and asking us, begging us in some cases for help to get out of the country. We came on the heels of the grand evacuation, you know, over 120,000 people coming out. So people that were in Afghanistan watched that. And it increased, I think, their uh, desperation to try to get on the same track. People don't trust the Taliban. They don't trust what they say. They don't trust that their words will match their actions. You would expect that people who have nothing would want to leave. But people who had something, good jobs, were also begging to leave. And so what are you going to be watching for in the coming weeks and months? There's so much we don't know. What we don't know, we don't know how the Taliban is going to govern. <laughs> How will they raise the funds to pay their people? Uh, will there be a fight between uh, factions, the moderates versus the extreme wing of the Taliban? How much will ISIS grip the country, ISIS-K? And it's very um, worrisome to think of what could happen. However, one thing I will say that uh, you know, people are starting to live with the Taliban. The country is adapting to this new, strange, difficult, unknown future. It doesn't look great at the moment, but they are trying to figure out how to run this country. Um, people are trying to figure out how to live. And that's promising. They have to do that. The vast majority of people are staying and they have to figure out how to live with the Taliban in control. There may be a kind of peace here. The Taliban has won its war, but now it has to govern. And the challenges it faces are as daunting as ever. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Panjway, Afghanistan.